Sometimes I'll hear from students, you want me to memorize all of these formulas? But the truth is there's really only one formula for a centroid. So I want to sort of work through them and sort of show you how, in fact, they're all the same thing. So consider some three-dimensional block like this, where I want to find the center of gravity of this thing. Now I could define an axis system. This, by the way, is what a center of gravity symbol looks like. If you see one of these, that means they're telling you that's the center of gravity. I'm going to take my three-dimensional object to find some axes. So I've got some depth into the page and a base and a height. I could take a tiny bit of that weight and integrate it all the way through so that the total weight would be the triple integral of dwx, dwi, dwlbz. So each of these is a differential bit of weight in the x, y, and z directions. So what I'm looking for for my centroid is an equivalent place to put the whole weight. So this whole weight goes where? And when I find this, I could actually balance my moments just like a pencil on your finger. I'm going to take the integral of x times each of these individual bits of weight at their individual bits of placement. And then I want to make this the same as some x bar times the total weight. Now if you look at this, I only have x. And if I'm talking about a block where x doesn't vary as I go into this or up from this, then what you're actually looking at is sort of the integral from 0 to b of x times the differential weight in the x direction. We're going to most often not want to be that specific when we're looking at the formulas. So we will say that the x bar is the integral of x times the differential weight, whatever it is, however you want to figure it out. And I can divide both sides by this red w, which is the total weight of my object. So that's the formula I would have for x bar. It's based on the same principle of balancing your pencil on either side. How much of my moment is here? How much of my moment is there? Find an equivalent system. And then divide both sides by w. So that's the center of gravity that we're talking about. I could find a similar center of gravity in y bar and z bar. It's the same derivation as you go all the way through. Is that one formula or, or three? It's kind of only one. The format of them is exactly the same. You know, the y bar is equal to the integral of y dw over the integral dw, and z bar is the integral of z times dw over dw. But it, it's all the same thing. And all the rest of them are all the same too. So if gravity is constant, then each little individual bit of differential weight is actually gravity times some individual bit of differential mass. So if I plug that into the formula I have here, x is gdm, x times gdm over the integral of gdm, well, I can pull my g's out because it just said gravity was constant and cancel them. And now I have x bar is the integral of x dm over the integral dm, which varies from this only in that my w has become an m. If my ob object is homogeneous, you know, the wood is the same all the way through, then the differential mass is some density of my object times the volume. Same thing. Plug it in. This goes in where the dm's are in this formula. But my rows are constant, and I can pull them out and cancel them, and I have a very similar looking formula for volume. Now, notice that this denominator here, the integral of dm, and the integral dv. Those are the total mass and the total volume. So sometimes they're actually given those as you don't have to do an integral at all. Same thing with y for the center of mass and z for the center of volume. The forms of these equations are exactly the same. If your object can be flattened, so if this doesn't really matter, and I can just treat this block as a two-dimensional object, then dv is d, some depth times df. And I can pull the depth out and cancel it. Now I have what we call the center of the area. You can even do it if you want just a line. If your object is just a line so your height is being neglected, so essentially shrink this all the way down until it's a line, pull the height out and, and divide. And now you have the center of the line. One thing about center of the line, 
if you actually think about what is DL, DL is a little bit of your line. So if you're doing cables or something and you want to take just a bit of the cable, this differential length is actually dx squared plus dy squared square rooted. So that's what goes into your integrals. Again, the denominator is the total length of your line. So once you've got all of these things, the question becomes, how can you tell them apart? All the formulas look the same. Do I want x bar, y bar, z bar? Do I want the center of the volume? Do I want the center of the area? Well, if in fact you're dealing with an area that's homogeneous, they're all going to be the same point. So it doesn't really matter which one you do. But pretty much the, the problem will make that clear as you're going along. One last thing I want to sort of point out here, the numerator here for the centroid of the area, this, if nobody says, they just ask you for a centroid, this is what they're talking about usually. The centroid of the area numerator is called q sub y. Now notice that doesn't match. This is the integral of x is q sub y. That's called the first moment of the area. And we will come back to that in a minute when we're doing moments of inertia, which is the second moment of the area.